me though. So if you can hear me, if you could please raise your hand um, on your webinar, that would be great. Okay, awesome. And if you can also go ahead and put your hands down, if you can raise your hand, if you can see a screen that's blue and says Girls Academy Chapter and Alumna Association Training. Fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with our presentation. Um, I'm just going to let you know we have probably about 30 to 45 minutes of overview about the program. And if you have any questions, please feel free to type them in the question box. And or if for some reason it seems as though my PowerPoint isn't keeping up or if you stop being able to hear me, feel free to either raise your hand or type those in the questions as well so that I can monitor and make sure that everybody can hear me throughout the entire presentation. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. So the first thing I want to talk to you guys about tonight is contact information. Um, as many of you know, we're working off of some applications that are at least a year old. So if you can make sure that your contact information is up to date, that would be fantastic. Um, if you didn't receive this original, uh, email originally letting me know or letting you know to register for this webinar, we need updated contact information. Or if you aren't the updated officer, president and girls academy officer, please let me know because I know some of you let me know to begin with, but not everybody did. I also need updated alumna president and an updated on-site alumna coordinator. Some of you just put that individual on your application, but some of you applied a year or a year and a half ago. And so that same person may no longer be the on-site alumna coordinator or the alumna president. So if you can make sure that that is also taken care of, that would be fantastic. I'm asking that you send me your updated contact information by March the 28th, which is not this upcoming Monday, but the following Monday. And I'm also expecting that for all Girls Academy inquiries, we have a 48-hour response via email. I understand that life gets hectic and it's super busy and if something comes up, please feel free to let me know that. But there are oftentimes questions that I need answers to in a timely manner and I've noticed, especially working with some college women, that I haven't been getting the responses that I need as quickly as I need them. So while I completely understand life happens and midterms happen and those types of things, that's completely fine. Um, but if you could just let me know if for some reason you're going to be unable to respond for a bit, that would be great. Next slide. So raise your hand if you can see the fall 26 locations. I just want to make sure the PowerPoint's working correctly. Fantastic. Okay, so as you see, we have nine Girls Academy this, this fall. That's fantastic. That's the most Girls Academies we will have hosted in one semester since this program began five years ago. Um, Loyola Chicago, University of Southern California, Arkansas, Minnesota, and I think that is it, have already hosted previously. Um, the others are new hosts, unless I am mistaken in some way, shape, or form. But as you can see, we have a very wide variety of host locations. So get to know some of the other people that are hosting Girls Academy and make sure that you're connecting with some other academies that may be close to you or even if they're across the country, they may have some good ideas for how to fundraise or for how to um, event plan when it comes to your event. Communication and expectations. So I've noticed after taking over this program now for the last two semesters that oftentimes the Alumna Association, myself, and the chapter are not necessarily all on the same page. There seems to be one or two people that are spearheading it on the chapter side, and then there's one or two people on the alumna side, and they're not working together very well. So if you can make sure that you're having open communication with one another, talking to one another about dates or changes, or if a school backs out on you, I hate to say it, but schools do back out on you. So you need to be prepared with backup options and your alumni associations are supposed to be the people that are helping you find those schools. So please make sure that you have constant communication with, you, with them. 
if you as an alumna association president don't know the girls academy chair or the or the president of that chapter please get to know them after this presentation because we need to make sure that everybody's on the same page dates for your girls academy event need to be approved by everybody involved um, again, I've watched over the last couple of semesters, either the chapter of the alumni, alumni association just charge forward with a date. That's fantastic. But then now all of a sudden, because of the date that was picked, the on-site area coordinator isn't available. But she doesn't know that until two weeks before the event or until three weeks before the event. And so they need to find a new on-site area coordinator. So make sure that you're just having constant communication about those dates, especially if dates change. Sometimes the middle schools tell you that they can't do the day that they had originally planned. That's okay. We can be flexible, but we just want to make sure that we're keeping everybody in the loop when dates change. School deadline and contracts. This is really important for you all to know because this deadline is quickly approaching. You are expected to have secured a middle school by May the 1st. So that is in a month and two weeks. That's still plenty of time if you haven't started going out to do that. All of you should have received the promotional packets in the mail. If you didn't, that's because your Girls Academy chair or president did not send me an email with their address. So please make sure that you get that done ASAP and then go out and find a school. You'll need to have the event contract that I sent to you with your initial email welcoming you to the Girls Academy program signed by May 1st and back to me. That is a hard deadline. If you do not have a school and it, you do not have a contract back to me by May the 1st, you are going to be enabled to host Girls Academy for this fall of 2016. The reason why we're so strict about getting this taken care of is because our lead facilitators need to know what date you've chosen, and I need to be able to match the lead facilitators with the correct location based upon their availability. And the lead facilitators typically should be known about four to six months out so that they can help you with the planning and all the facilitation that you need on the chapter and association side in order to host a successful Girls Academy event. So May 1st is a hard deadline. Um, if you think that there are going to be problems with hitting the May 1st deadline, reach out to me. Um, I can be flexible, but I cannot be that flexible. So May 1st is the date that we really need to make sure that we have all nine locations and dates in. Um, if you already have your date, great, send it to me right now so that I can get all of that information into my spreadsheet and I can start matching with facilitators sooner rather than later. Funding. So all chapters and alumni associations are expected to raise a total of $4,900. A $500 deposit has already been collected from each of your organizations, and funding assistance chapters will only raise $2,900, presuming that your grant comes through through the foundation. Um, those that are funding assistance chapters, you know who you are. You are still expected to raise the $2,900. Even if you don't think you can get there, you need to let me know because we may have additional options but I want to make sure that you are well aware, 2,900 for funding assistance, 4,900 for other chapters. Your money is due 60 days before your event. So if you are hosting September the 15th, that means July the 15th, your money is due. So really you should be working on raising that money the end of this semester so that you're in good shape and you're not working on trying to figure out how to get your money in over the summer. Again, just like the hard deadline of May the 1st for your contract, if you don't raise the $4,900 by the deadline of 60 days before your event, you're not going to be permitted to host. And this is really important for you to note, the money that you have raised already will be donated to the foundation and will go into the Girls Academy General Fund and will be used for other funding assistance chapters, for general training for facilitators, and for the development of this program in further ways. Please, please, please take this seriously. We have had chapters that we have had to postpone because they've not raised their $4,900. So please keep, this, please keep this on the forefront of your planning process and recognize that $4,900 isn't simple 
for some of you to raise. Others of you may just pull it out of a budget, but you need to have a plan for that. Um, you can track your funding at the link below. Just because my computer gets funky when I go on and off PowerPoint, I'm going to show you at the very end where that link takes you and where you can see this on the website, but I'm going to get through the entire PowerPoint first. Okay, I see that some of you have your hands raised. If you have a question, go ahead and type it in the question box. Okay, so somebody asked who the check should be addressed to for donations for your chapter specific Girls Academy. You need to address all checks to the Kappa Kappa Gamma Foundation. And in the memo line, you will put Loyola Chicago Girls Academy or um, who would be a Trinity Girls Academy. Whatever your chapter designation is, you'll put that in the memo line. I would also include leaving a note with that check that gets sent that says this is where this money is supposed to go. If you're sending a large check, shoot me an email and let me know that you're sending that check and I will alert our foundation office and I will also um, alert our finance department and just let them know, hey, Loyola Chicago is sending a $3,500 check. It got sent in the mail on Friday. I would expect we'll have it by Wednesday. Please let me know once it's deposited. Um, so that is who it gets made out to. Are there any other questions with regards to who the checks get made out to? Okay, it looks like we're good on questions for now. So I'm going to keep moving. If you have other questions, continue to ask them. So typically, we get through this process, and we're halfway through it, and we have a chapter or an association say, why do we even have to raise $4,900? What does that go to? This breakdown is in the application that your chapter and association used when applying for Girls Academy. However, this is the total breakdown for the total $4,900. Your lead facilitators, travels, and meals are going to be $1,000. The school facility rental and utilities and the school administrator stipend is a total of $1,000. We break it out into the both 500s, but the way that it's dismissed or the way that it's dispersed on a reimbursement form is $1,000. Participant workbooks, which are the journals that they get, they're bound, they're beautiful. Um, those are the things that they get to take home with them. Those are $500. Um, they're like $9.80 a journal to make. So we definitely want to make sure that we're not throwing any of those away or that we're sending back any of those participant workbooks that you don't use. You'll be sent 80 total t-shirts. Those t-shirts are predetermined in size. We have a sizing range that we just purchased the same number of sizes. If for some reason you need um, a shirt that's going to be an extra, extra large, you need to let me know ahead of time because we don't order any extra larges, but we do order extra, extra larges. We do order um, small to extra large. Um, additional materials, supplies, and giveaways is at 800 Printing and copying, so you will see I will send you a lot of printed information. That's going to be up to $200. Postage and delivery, the supplies are very expensive to send. So we will go ahead and use that $400 almost in its entirety to get your supplies to you and then for you to get your supplies back to us. And we'll talk about reimbursements a little bit later in the presentation. Administrative costs, so that's the cost for me to help you run this program. That's $500, and every Girls Academy pays that. And then the total program cost of $4,900. If you are a funding assistance chapter, this is still how this breakdown works. However, this breakdown is, a, is just given, you get a grant for an extra $2,000 that goes into your money. So your pot will still look like it has $4,900. You just will have been responsible for $2,900 of it. I see a couple hands raised. Please remember to put, you're all on mute, so please remember to put your questions in the question box. That way I can answer them should you have them. School information. For those of you that are still looking for a school, please know it needs to be a middle school. We are asking that the demographic be fifth through eighth grade. 
don't love fifth grade, but we can work with it if um, we absolutely have to. Ideally, it would be six through eight. We need 50 participants. No more, no less. 50 is the sweet spot. We do send 10% overage of all materials to you, so you will get 55 of everything just in case you have a couple walk-in girls or something happens and somebody double booked or something. We will make sure that you have enough supplies for 55 participants, but please don't advertise that to the school. This program works best with 50 people. Um, if the program has more than 50, put them on a wait list. And as people drop out or say, hey, I've got to go to a family reunion, you can pull somebody off that wait list. You can also pull somebody off that wait list on Saturday morning when the girls go to check in. And you may see that only 45 people are there. You're more than welcome to call another five people and ask if they're interested in coming. The key to remember is that this program is free for the student. So it's not like it's a last minute um, financial obligation for them either. Ask for Wi-Fi and internet access so that volunteers and our facilitators can get on the Kappa Cloud. You won't have access to the Kappa Cloud, but your lead facilitators will. Kappa Cloud is like their Bible because it has all of the information for the Girls Academy program that they could possibly need on the cloud. It also has all of the um, videos that we will show throughout the Girls Academy presentation. And so we want to make sure that they have access to that. If there is some reason that YouTube or videos like live video streaming is going to be blocked, talk with the school and see what we can do to get that unblocked just for the weekend or to see if they can give you a private password so that just you can stream that information. A school administrator should be on site at all times. We do not specify whether that is a male or a female. I will tell you most schools will ask that it be a female. However, a school administrator should be on site at all times. Please reiterate that this is an overnight experience. The number of times that a Girls Academy program has happened and parents have shown up and have not been prepared for their daughter to be staying overnight is kind of astonishing to me. So please reiterate that it's an overnight experience. You can go in and you can do opportunities where you can recruit the um, recruit these middle school girls through either parent teacher conferences, through a school fair that they may be having, through an assembly that they may do at the end of school. You can go and you can sit in their lunchroom and talk to them about these programs. However, and whatever you need to do to get registrants, that's fine, but please make sure that you're engaging with them in that level as well. You also need to verify any documentation that's needed for facilitators or volunteers for their school. So a lot of schools have come back to us and said, we need to have all of your volunteers fingerprinted, or we need a background check. So what does that look like? Do they need to be fingerprinted in that city? Do they need to have a background check that's within 30 days? Could it be within a year? If they, are a, if they are a teacher in some sort of system, do they still need the fingerprinting? Do they still need the background checks? Those are important questions to ask, so please make sure that you're asking them. We did have one um, middle school that has asked for a TB test. TB tests are expensive. And we want to make sure that only the certain number of people that need TB tests have to have DB tests. I would encourage you that if they tell you to do fingerprinting, background checks, TB testing, that you continue to look for another middle school, knowing that you still have them as an option, but seeing if you can make it a little bit more fiscally responsible for you as a chapter. You saw the funding breakdown. Fingerprinting, background checks, and TB testing is not covered in your funding breakdown. That money comes straight out of the school stipend. They only get $1,000, and that's if they do the things that they're expected to do. So that money comes straight out of their school stipend, and once it's up, it's up. So make sure that you are having those conversations with them and being very transparent. If they don't need TB tested, we don't want to get them TB tested. Um, another good thing to remember with that is ask what is a requirement for a parent volunteer that comes in and helps in their child's classroom. If they're in sixth or seventh grade or even eighth grade and a parent is coming in to volunteer, 
what is her requirement or what is his requirement? Because our school, our small group facilitators, OACs, alumna volunteers should be meeting those same requirements. I, we do understand that those that are spending the night may have additional requirements, totally fine, but just make sure that you're being upfront with that as well. If you are in a location where Spanish is a popular language, we do have most of our materials in Spanish that are sent home for families. And we also have a very small amount of the evaluations that are in Spanish as well. It's the only thing that you would need to have in Spanish. We don't have any of the program materials in Spanish because we expect that all of these women can speak English. But for the parents that are dropping them off or for grandparents, if you uncover that you need to have Spanish materials, we have those. So materials and shipping guidelines. Um, you will get facilitator guides and curriculum binders six to seven weeks before your event. That is going to be sent to whatever address you provide to me. So make sure that whatever address you need, you let me know um, where I need to be sending this to. Registration and school paperwork, you're going to get four to five weeks out. It's going to come in a big blue binder. That is your Bible as an association and as a chapter. That has evaluations, it has registration materials, it has all of your parent information. That's what you can use to table or to do these assemblies. Whatever you may need to do, that is something that you will want to make sure that you have. Recruitment in the school is not something that you have to wait until four to five weeks out to do. You can go and you can do that today if you really wanted to. But you definitely want to make sure that once you get that document, once you get those documents, you get those straight into the middle school and you start to get women registered. Um, looks like I have a question. Hang on just a second. Somebody asked to clarify the cost of fingerprinting and TV testing if necessary will be drawn from the $1,000 stipend that is paid to the school. Yes, that will be drawn from the $1,000 that is paid to the school unless the school has other options. Some schools have a program with their local police department or with a local university where TB testing can be done for free um, or we can bring a TB test from somewhere else. Yes, we are just looking for the most cost efficient way to do this, but it will be taken from the $1,000 that's given to the school. And I'm going to give you a little bit more of a breakdown as to what that $1,000 really entails so that you can also see that it's kind of difficult for a school to get the entire $1,000. Um, moving on, t-shirts, those will be sent one month out. Some um, alumni associations and chapters have purchased their own t-shirts and have worn them on Sunday or Saturday and have worn the t-shirts that I have sent them on the other day. That's fine. If you want to do that, that's fine. But that is not covered in the cost that we, in that $4,900. We will send you 80 t-shirts and those 80 t-shirts will get sent um, straight to you and whatever you don't use, then you will send them back to us. But the 50 participants should get their shirts first and then event staff would, and facilitators will get their shirts afterwards. A banner will also be sent to you one month out with the t-shirts. The banner will come in um, what looks like a poster container. So it's gonna be a small round tube. Make sure you're paying attention to that because a lot of people just either set that aside because they don't know what it is um, or somehow lose it. Please make sure you pay attention to that. Your program and leadership fair materials are going to be sent to you about two weeks out. I try not to send them much further than two weeks out because then they just sit and they clutter up somebody's apartment or your chapter house or um, somebody's regular house. As soon as you get those shipments, specifically the program and leadership fair materials, please open it up and make sure that you have all of the supplies that you need. If you get it two weeks ahead of time, don't wait until the night before to open it up and count and make sure that you have 55 participant booklets and 55 backpacks and 55 water bottles. We need to make sure that we have all of those things ready to go so that if for some reason you are short, I have enough time to still mail you those supplies before your event begins. If you call me on Saturday morning and say, hey, Hillary, we don't have X number of participant workbooks, I don't have anything that I can do to help you. So please make sure that you are counting those and looking at all of the supplies 
ahead of time. Once you are finished, you'll ship everything back to headquarters after the event. There are a few things on the packing slip that we say, please do not ship back. One of those things is chalk. Chalk breaks once it's been open and it gets all over the tubs. So please don't send those back. Um, you will also be given a packing supply list and that packing supply list will tell you everything that I have sent you, but then everything that you still need to buy as an association or as a chapter. The things that you purchase are completely reimbursable, but you still need to purchase those supplies as well. I will send one person from your association or chapter, so I will be sending out nine total USB drives. That USB drive will have every piece of documentation that you need from your event contract to your event guide to the participant booklet to the reimbursements. Everything that you will need will be on there. And so please make sure you have that. Should for some reason you be short something, it'll be on there and you could run to Kinko's and you could print it the day of your event or the morning before your event. So please just make sure that you keep track of that USB drive. When we're finished with the event, that USB drive will just go back in your supplies and it'll be shipped back to headquarters. Everything should be shipped within a week of your event. Um, there's no reason for your for these tubs to sit in your chapter house or apartment or wherever, please send those immediately. I don't care if on Sunday you go straight to UPS or Monday morning, that's fine. Whatever you spend shipping wise, we will reimburse you for as well. Um, but we want everything back to headquarters in a very timely manner, just because we do have nine events and we don't have nine sets of all supplies. I will make sure everybody has the supplies but the easier and the sooner that you can get that back to me, the better. Um, and then lastly, with the supplies, it's going to come in a certain way. So I will have like purple tubs stuffed inside boxes with other boxes that are going to come. Keep those boxes because it's hard to find materials to send these things out in. So make sure you keep those boxes. You don't just throw them away once you've unpacked because you'll want those to send back to me. Facilitators and fit. So um, we will more than likely have a couple of fits, which are facilitators in training this upcoming fall. They have not been notified, nor have they been assigned Girls Academy locations yet, but we will notify you should you be assigned a fit. Your facilitator is the lead facilitator. The lead one is the person that does most of the large group interaction um, and does the lead one role of facilitating your large group sessions. Lead two is everything event guide, event expertise, making sure that you're staying on schedule and that you're keeping track of everything that needs to happen and when it needs to happen. Um, lead two will work with lead one on some of the large group session things, but will mainly be the behind the scenes logistics. You will be notified of who those people are after you give me your dates and after everybody turns everything in on May the 1st. Immediately start coordinating with them. If you do have a fit, you'll need to coordinate with her. Everybody should be on those emails that you go out and every and your facilitators and fits are your first point for questions. So you ask them the questions first and then if they don't know the answer or if there's some confusion, you can then come to me and ask me some questions if they just need a little bit of help or if it's a unique situation. Fits are really there to learn how to facilitate and to become, become very familiar with the curriculum. In the past, fits have been sent to run errands or to go pick up food or to, I don't know, just do something that's not learning and becoming familiar with the curriculum. Please don't put them in the situation where you're asking them to go run your errands. Um, be prepared ahead of time. Go through the checklist the night before and just make sure that all last minute details are taken care of. The chapter is expected to house facilitators and fits for pre-training, Friday night training, and um, anything else that you should need a housing for. I don't think there shouldn't be anything else, but... Just know for pre-training and Friday night training, you are expected to house your facilitator, but it doesn't have to be in a hotel. It can be with an alumna at her house. It can be at the chapter house. It can be wherever you want to put them. 
um, make them comfortable, but you can, you definitely do not need to book a hotel and that housing is not covered within your $4,900. Pre-training. So you will do a pre-training event three to four weeks before your in-person actual girls Academy event. The pre-training will be with your facilitators and your fit. Um, you're going to work together to solidify a date and a location only the lead one facilitator will be there and the fits within driving distance. In some rare situations, if lead one is in driving distance and lead two wants to be at the pre-training, we will accept that, but we will not pay for two people to fly to your pre-training event. Chapter and association are expected to house fees and house, feed, and transport the fits and facilitators. We talked about that previously. And you need to plan for a full day training. So this pre-training is about six hours. There are different sections of the day that are for all different sorts of people. So your facilitators will be there all six hours, um, but event staff will need to be there for a couple of hours, your on-site area coordinator, your alumna. So please make sure that whatever date you have you kind of just block it off and then your facilitator, your lead one facilitator can tell you at what time and at what point of the training each individual needs to be there. Friday night training. So this is the night before your girls academy. It is going to be about four hours. So plan to be together that Friday night. You will want to make sure that you have dinner for that night. I don't care if it's pizza, Chinese, subs, whatever it may be, that's totally fine. That's up to you, but you will need to make sure that you have time for that food that's built in. Your facilitators will start to arrive in the three to four o'clock range on Friday. Um, you don't need to be there to necessarily engage with them the entire time, but when your training starts at five o'clock or 530, everybody needs to be there. Um, this Friday night training, your lead one, two, and your fits will participate. So everybody's going to be there. And everybody involved in the weekend should be at the Friday night training. Volunteers and event staff. So your college-age women will serve as a small group facilitators. There is an application process should you want an application. Um, you need to know that we have five small groups. So there will be a max of 10 small group facilitators. There are a couple of associations and chapters that have assigned three or four women to one small group. That's not appropriate, um, especially with the dynamic of the middle school girl to the college age woman. We just need to make sure that it's no more than two for every 10 individuals. I'm going to pause because it looks like there's a question. Does the Friday night training happen at the school? The Friday night training can happen at the school, but it does not have to. You can do the Friday night training at a chapter house, on campus, at an alumna association, like the alumna president's house, wherever you want to do Friday night training, you can do it. It is nice if at least your small group facilitators or a couple of event staff have gone through the school before the Girls Academy program, just to make sure that they understand the way that the school works and um, all of the different routes that you can get to your rooms and all of that. But no, it does not have to happen at the school. Okay, so I'm going to keep going. Um, you will have, like we said, two lead facilitators. Your fit, if you have one or if you don't. Um, we probably will not be training nine fits this semester. So if I were to have to guess, only some of you will have fits. Others of you will not. And then 20 plus event staff. These event staff are your college age woman, um, as well as your local alumna through your alumna association. You will need people that will be overnight monitors. We don't ask that the small group facilitators serve as overnight monitors because they will have been with those girls all day long and need their sleep just as much as those girls need their sleep. Um, you will need an on-site area coordinator. All of your applications had one, so please verify that that's still that person. And then you'll need the school administrator as well. Day of event and event resources. Follow the event guide, please. Um, the event guide is there for a reason. It's not to be modified. It is truly to be followed down to the minute. Um, if you have any questions about it, let me know. Or if you think something's not going to work well, let me know.
Have event staff understand what supplies are needed at each point in time throughout the entire Girls Academy event. From 12 to 1 o'clock during the leadership fair, they may need batteries and the RC cars and the screwdrivers, whereas they may need um, their flip chart paper at some point in other times. So just make sure that you understand and know that event guide like the back of your hand. There is another question. Hang on. Do the overnight monitors have to be alumna or can they mostly be chapter women? They do not have to be alumna. They can be chapter women or they can be alumna. Either or. Um, does not necessarily matter if it's one or the other. Whatever works best for you and your event planning. Um, okay, so again, day of event and event resources. You need to know the supplies. You also need to make sure that you know the event guide. You need to ensure that you have everything you need before you start your event. This includes snacks and drinks. Your snacks and drinks are not included in the $4,900. There are a lot of local businesses that are more than happy to donate food if you work with them quickly enough um, and give them enough of time. So please work with them. You can do outside fundraising. That's fine. Um, and then you'll also want to make sure that you have Saturday night activities like games and karaoke and dance parties and whatever you want to do, use your imagination, but that's something that you'll want to make sure that you can keep them busy for a little bit. Um, I will also show you the Kappa cloud at the end where I show you where the fundraising tracking is just so that you can also see what your facilitators have access to. So if for some reason they say, oh, I can't find that document, you can say, hey, Hillary said that you have access to the Capital Cloud. Check there. Reimbursements. So if the chapter needs reimbursement or reimbursed for supplies or for your return shipments or anything like that, we ask that you do submit that within three weeks of your event. You do need to have receipts. This can be a printed off UPS label. It can be something that you've ordered from Amazon and all you have is the shipment confirmation that says the price. That's okay. But please make sure that you keep those receipts and you send those to me immediately. You can pay for these things out of chapter and association budget money. If you pay for it out of chapter money, we will deposit your refund back into your Bill Highway account. If you one individual pays for it, we'll cut them a check. If your association pays for it, we'll cut them a check. Just let me know what you need and who needs to be reimbursed for the supplies. You will not be reimbursed for food. We talked about that before. So please just keep that in mind. No food will be reimbursed. So school reimbursement and um, your report and all of the evaluations, all of this stuff is so important. The school will only be reimbursed if they submit the reimbursement form. So this is not an automatic $1,000 that they will get. They need to go through the effort of completing their school evaluation. And they also need to submit 75% of the parent post-event evaluations in order to receive the $1,000. $1,000 is broken down to $20 per student. If you start with less than 50 participants, you automatically have less than the $1,000. So if you only start with 40 participants, the max stipend that you could receive would be $800. And then say you only get 60% of the evaluations, we'll give you 60% of that $800. So just make sure that they understand that we need to have all of those post-event evaluations and we need to make sure that we get our reimbursement and re requisition requests back from them as well. They only have a one month time frame as well. So please make sure that you are working with them after your event to follow up with all of these details. Final reports and evaluations from the chapter should be mailed back with the supplies. The final report, I will send that to you as soon as your event is over. You need to work with your lead one, lead two, your OAC, your association, etc., and fill out that report. The only thing on the report you will not have to fill out is going to be the financial information. I fill that out, but you need to answer the evaluation questions and you need to answer all of the questions regarding your event. This is super important, important. for us to make sure that Girls Academy is still running effectively. We have to do valid assessment and data analysis. 
So these assessments that we get back are super important. So please make sure to take the time to get those back from your small group facilitators, from the, ch from the chapter women, from the participants, from the school, and from the participants' parents. I know it seems like it's a lot of paperwork to have to keep track of, but it is really beneficial for us. Mentoring and post-event. Um, so after your event, you will do a one to two weeks later, you will do a conference call with your lead one and lead two facilitators. They will talk to you about the good and the bad of the program, what you could do in the future if you're going to apply again, pros and cons, etc. cetera. Um, but they also are going to help you get prepared for this mentoring and post-event um, activity. So we are asking that within eight weeks of your event, you do a follow-up mentoring event with these participants that participated in Girls Academy. You can do whatever you want. You can go and hang out at their school with them. You can invite them to campus and give them a campus tour and show them your chapter house or your section of the residence hall or whatever you may want to do. You could do a magic show. You can do an ice cream social. You can bring in a comedian and tell jokes, whatever you want to do. Um, but we want to make sure that you're keeping the connection with these college or with these Girls Academy participants. Some of these women will never have seen a college campus and you bringing them to your campus could open the doors of the possibility for them to be able to go to college in 10 or so years, not 10 or so years, in six or so years when they're ready to go to college. Some of them won't ever have been able to go back to a college campus after you invite them. So you may be opening the doors to an opportunity that they never would have had previously. So please do your best to plan this post-event or mentoring activity. Doesn't need to cost a lot of money. It doesn't need to cost money at all. You can even just go in and hang out with them at school in an after-school program or go and um, be a pen pal with them for the next couple of months. Totally fine. But we want to make sure that you're doing some sort of post-event mentoring activity. So before I get to questions, um, I did not make slides about these, but I do want to talk to you about fundraising. I don't care how you fundraise. That is up to you. Please do it legally. But past that, if you want to babysit for um, women or families on campus or in your association or wherever and all of the money that you raise babysitting goes straight towards Girls Academy, or if you would like to... Um, host a philanthropy event, whatever you want to do, that's fine. If you want to do a telethon with your alumni to see if you can raise 10, 15, 20 bucks each person, you can do that as well. So keep that in mind. However, you get to that $4,900 or $2,900, more power to you, but just get to the $49 or $2,900. Um, and then really important for, um, I guess, for 501c3 purposes. If you as a chapter collect all of the money and send it into the foundation, you as a chapter would get the 501c3 credit. If you as a chapter have hosted an event and you've collected $20 from Sally and $30 from Susie and $40 from Bobby and Bobby, Susie and Sally wanted the 501c3 credit, you need to send that money in and say, okay, that came in a check. You send in three separate checks. They can all come in the same envelope, but it's three separate checks. And we know exactly who donated what so that we can give them credit through CAPA fundraising and the foundation and 501c3 credit. If the person donates and says, I don't want this to be tax exempt, that's fine. You don't have to go about delineating where that money came from but you do need to make sure that you are noting if they want to be have a 501c3 tax exempt donation, they either need to make the donation themselves through the fundraising page, or they need to send a check directly to the foundation. If they make a check out to Trinity, Trinity chapter and Trinity chapter turns around and writes us a check, they will not get the 501c3 donation. So please make sure you understand that when you're um, talking to donors or talking to people who are donating money to you. Other than that, I'm going to open it up for questions. I already have some. Continue to ask questions as we go along. If there's something that I forgot, please let me know. 
Um, this is a general overview of this program. We'll do one more um, presentation and a follow-up refresher as we get closer to your girls' academies, either um, late this summer or early this fall. So stay tuned. Um, this will also be recorded for anybody that you want to have listened to this or anybody that you think needs to listen to this. Um, it's really important that your OAC, your alumna president, your chapter president, and your Girls Academy chair have listened to this. So if you would like to share that with them, that's great as well. Um, but at this point, let's just talk questions. And if there's anything that you forget and that you need to ask later, you all have my email. My email is hstahl at kkg.org. Shoot me an email or um, call my number at Kappa and I can answer any questions that you may have. Okay, so if the post event activity costs something, how does the, cha how does the chapter cover that cost? Um, again, fundraising or through a programming budget. This is something that budgets have not been turned in yet for chapters. They will, or they may have just been turned in yet, or turned in. You do have the ability to budget a little bit more money for that, but I have seen a lot of chapters do something that it's been very minimal in cost, um, maybe a hundred to two hundred dollars. So you just have to work with the chapter money and or you have to over fundraise for that particular expense. I will tell you, um, Please don't fundraise more than $4,900 to the foundation. If you raise more than $4,900, we can't give you that money back. So if you know that you've raised $5,500, send $4,900 of it to the foundation and keep the $600 for food and for a post-mentoring event and for any supplies that you may need that aren't necessarily required but that you think would be a nice added touch. Please only give us the $4,900 that you owe us just because we cannot write you back a check for that extra money. Are there any other questions? Raise your hand if you have a question and you're in the process of writing it. Okay, hang on just a second. There are a couple hands that were raised. Once we finish with questions, I'm going to go off of the screen and I will show you where the fundraising, the fundraise tracking is, as well as what the Kappa Cloud looks like. So if your facilitators have any questions, um, you know the answers to those. Is there a registration template for the school to use and does it include health information? There is a registration template for the school to use. I believe it has very minimal health information on it, as such as, are you allergic to anything? Um, we do ask that the, you have an open conversation with the school and just ask that if a student does have a medical condition or allergies or anything like that, that they note that with you. But I do not believe it is specifically on the registration template, but that is also something that we could easily add so if it's not, I will make sure that we get a section to be added so that we are well aware of if somebody has a medical condition. Um, do people willing to donate make the checkout to Kappa Kappa Gamma Foundation with a specific chapter in the memo with a note? Yes. So you need to make the checkout to the Kappa Kappa Gamma Foundation. You'll put the specific chapter in the memo or with a note with the check and then that will then so say I donated to the New York um the NYU Girls Academy so Hillary Saul writes a check to Kappa Kappa Gamma I'm going to put NYU GA in the memo I'm going to include a note just letting them know where it's going to go the foundation processes that they send a letter back to Hillary Stahl that says, thank you so much for your donation to the Girls Academy program. It will not say which specific Girls Academy program, but it will say thank you for your donation to the Girls Academy program. Your donation of $50 is tax exempt. Here is our organization's tax exempt number. And then they just keep that for tax purposes. It also gives them a bounce back. Um, if they do something via email 
and or online and they put in their donation online, they also are given a bounce back email saying thank you for your donation. And then we will follow up with a note in the mail probably two to three weeks later. Are there any other questions? I raise your hand if you're in the process of writing one. Okay, there is still an, uh, another couple of questions, so we're going to hang on. If the $4,900 has been met, then who do you make the check out to? You, make, you still make the check out to the Kappa Kappa Gamma Foundation. All checks will be made out to the Kappa Foundation and will be mailed to Kappa Headquarters, 530 East Town Street, um, PO Box 38, Columbus, Ohio. And then you can put on it Attention Girls Academy or Attention Finance Department. You can put any of those things on it, but the check will always be made out to the Kappa Kappa Gamma Foundation. We do ask that you try not to send cash. Um, that's not necessarily something that somebody has asked, but please don't send us a lot of cash in the mail. Just in case it does get lost, we like to be able to track the check that comes. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions. Are there any other questions at this time? Okay, so I'm going to go off the screen, and if you have another question, please feel free to type it in the question box, and I'll, kept, I'll get to it at the very, very end. Okay, so you all, hopefully, if I'm doing this correctly, and if my screen is liking me, you should see a web page that says cloud.kkg.org. Raise your hand if you see that. Perfect. Okay, so this screen, you'll see in the left-hand side, it says main cloud. This is gonna be your facilitator's best friend. Down here, it says Girls Academy Facilitators, and there are a whole ton of different, um, there are probably, what, 10 to 12 folders here. Each of these folders have different information in them. So chapter and alumna association resources. These are also going to be things that I will be sending on that flash drive that I send to each of you. But small group facilitator event applications, video releases, pre-event training documents, all of this stuff is in here. So this is really the Bible of documentation when it comes to Girls Academy. The supplies and the packing, again, I will be sending this to you on that flash drive. Make sure you look at it because it shows all of the supplies that you need to purchase. Um, next, Kappa Kappa Gamma. Raise your hand if you see now the Kappa Kappa Gamma website. Perfect. Okay. So up at the top of the website, this is just our complete homepage. You'll see education as the fourth um, header over here. You're going to scroll to the bottom of the education page, and now over here, you can see your fun, fundraising, fundraising progress as of right now. Some of these girls' academies are happening currently as we speak, so most of these girls' academies that you see that have 177% or 137%, those have already happened, but you can see that Minnesota, Tulsa, Southern Cal, um, you, uh, Arkansas, Loyola, Chicago, NYU, Akron, UC Berkeley and Santa Clara and Trinity. You're all up here and you're all ready to go. So if I would like to donate specifically to your girls Academy, some of them are linked this way. Others are not the reason being because we are now making too many web pages. We can't link them directly, but I believe Minnesota is one that is directly linked. So if I click university of Minnesota, 
it's going to take me straight to the Kappa Kappa Gamma dot org foundation page. And it says, University of Minnesota Girls Academy, please donate. You do not have to be a member to see any of this stuff or to donate. So if you want, if you want to send this out to parents, if you want to send this out to schools, whoever you want to send this out to, totally fine. But you can give them this information. You'll enter your personal information. You'll enter your payment. And then at the end, you'll press the donate button. And that is it. And within 24 hours, your donation will then be reflected back on this tracking. That tracking page will not be automatically reflective of any checks that are sent in. You have to give us about a two-week turnaround time from when we get the check because of the channels that it has to go through, but an online donation will take effect immediately, so please make sure that you're monitoring that and you're keeping that in mind as well. For those of you that it doesn't take straight to your Girls Academy, which I believe NYU is one of them, You'll click on it, and it says, invest in every Kappa. You're going to select the Girls Academy programs, and this is the main foundation page. So this is what all of you would see if you just went to the Kappa Foundation. You'll select Girls Academy programs, and then you just pick your Girls Academy program from here. So NYU, we would select, and then up here, you will now see it says, please select a fund. You've selected NYU and then you can go ahead and give your donation. If a parent makes a mistake and says, oh shoot, never mind, I'm at Akron, they just go back, they click, and they put Akron right up there. So super simple for you to get those donations done online, and it's also a very easy way to not have to mess with a 501c3. Anything that is submitted online will automatically go 501c3 status. So that is all that I wanted to show you. Do we have any remaining questions that you have to, or that you have that you need answered before we go ahead and hop off? Go ahead and raise your hand if you are gonna have a question. Okay, I see a couple hands, so I'm gonna hang on for just a little bit. And like I said, this will definitely be recorded, so if you wanna go back and you wanna listen to it later, you're more than welcome to go back and listen to it later. And if you have any other questions, you're always able to reach out to me personally, and I'm able to answer those for you. Okay. Who can see the amount in the donation progress? How do they access that? Well, it's seen over here. So on the education or on the education page, you'll see the percentage to total that you are at. Everybody can access this. It's on the public side of our website. So you don't have to be a member. So when I'm looking at this, not a member of Kappa Kappa Gamma, it will say Emory Girls Academy, you are 137% to your goal, which means they've raised over their 4,900. Once it says 100%, that means we have $4,900 in our bank account for your Girls Academy. Any other questions? Okay, I'm seeing a couple hands up. Any questions, raise your hand before we end. Okay, it looks like there's still a hand up, so I will wait. What's the minimum amount of middle school students that can participate? Um, that's a hard question. We truly say 50, but we recognize that sometimes 50 won't happen. Um, we have run it with 30 before. It's not been as successful as we have wanted it to be. If we have to run with a smaller amount, we will um, adjust how many small group facilitators we have. 
like I said, we will not do more than two facilitators for every 10 girls. And we really don't want a group smaller than five or six girls. So if you only have 30 participants, we're more than likely going to cut down your small groups and say, okay, now we're just going to do four, four groups of seven or four groups of eight. Um, but you would work with me and your lead facilitators to really determine that. We just want to make sure that you do your absolute best to try and get to that 50 number. But the event can be successful with less than 50. And I should also note, um, should your event only have 30 people, that doesn't mean that you need to only raise whatever that is, 60% of the total, 70% of the total of the $4,900 because you have less participants. You will still be expected, even if you only have 10 participants show up, your amount raised will be $4,900 because we will have purchased the supplies for $55. Well, I'm waiting for last minute questions to come in. I just want to thank you guys. Um, this definitely has been hopefully informative for you and brought everybody onto the same page as to where they need to be with their um, fundraising, their tracking, their facilitation, finding a school, all of the things. If you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm more than available pretty much at all times. So just reach out to me. I will be available the weekends of all of your girls' academies. I may not be able to answer the phone right that second, but you will have my cell phone number and my voicemail through Kappa goes straight to my email so I can listen to that literally wherever I am. Um, so I'm more than happy to answer any of those questions as those questions come up or if you have something that comes up on the weekend of your event. Um, but please just stay ahead of things. Do not fall behind. I have watched chapters fall behind and it's not easy for them to catch back up after they've fallen behind. We have told chapters know that they are not going to host because they haven't gotten the right number of participants and because they haven't raised their money or because their middle school has backed out last minute or what, whatever it may be. So it is something that does happen. So please make sure that you are very prepared to overcome any of the obstacles that may be put in front of you. Middle school sometimes can get a little freaked by the fact that it's an overnight experience. I'm more than happy to talk to any middle school administrators for you and just ensure them that of all of the girls' academies that we've done, and we've done almost 40 at this point, of all of the girls' academies that we've done, we've not had an issue overnight. There's never been a problem, and all of the girls have loved that experience, and our evaluations rave about the fact that they get to spend the night in the middle school. So that's definitely not something that we've had issues with previously. Um, the only other thing that I will say that has come up as an obstacle when selecting a school is some schools do look at this as a Title IX issue because we are only offering this program to women instead of women and men. Um, we will not offer this program to men. This is not something that we can or have the capability or even the curriculum to do with men. So if a school asks that, we're more than happy to provide them with some of our resources, but they will be on their own for creating a program that would give men the same opportunity that women have had by attending this Girls Academy event. So it doesn't seem like any other questions have come in. Like I said, you have my email, it's hstall at kkg.org, and my direct phone number is 614-341-2138. And I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. And it looks like one more question came in. Um, does our chapter need to purchase sleeping bags or provide sleeping arrangements for the girls? You do not need to provide sleeping arrangements because they typically will sleep in their school gym or cafeteria or whatnot. We ask that they bring um, sleeping items. They don't necessarily need to bring a sleeping bag, but if they would like to bring a comfortable blanket and a pillow and a comforter. Yes, they do need to bring that. There have been some schools that have given us some pushback about, well, you're expecting our girls to spend the night. You need to provide them a sleeping bag. We would ask that the chapter pay for that cost as well. So if you do have a school that says they need to be sleeping with sleeping bags or not every girl has a sleeping bag, 
talk to me. We can maybe work some things out. Um, but for right now, that would be something that we would ask that the participants make sure that they bring. That's also in their packing list. So when you give their parents a packing list and when they register, it shows them exactly what they need to bring for the weekend. So that will also be included. All right, and I think we are done. Like I said, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Please note May 1st is the hard deadline for getting your dates in and update any contact information with B by March 28th. So if you have any other questions in the time being, um, go ahead and shoot me an email and I will look forward to working with all of you. Next steps is, are going to be sending you your lead facilitators, hopefully in early May. Um, everybody have a great night, and I hope that everything with your middle school solidification goes well. And if you need my help in any way, shape, or form, just reach out to me. Thanks so much. Bye, everybody.